We're going to look now at the closure of a set under addition, which is a very specific thing to look at, but it's another thing that comes in very handy when you're looking at vector spaces. So let's take a look at what it means for a set to be closed under addition. Here's the definition. If I've got a set S, any two elements of S, if I add them, however addition is defined for whatever's in that set, if I add them together, I get something that's in that set again. And that's how close, then we say that set S is closed under addition. So let's look at some sets we've seen before with numbers. The natural numbers, if I look at the natural numbers and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, all the way to infinity. If you take any two natural numbers and you add them together, do you again get a natural number? The answer is yes. So the natural numbers is closed under addition. Same for integers and real numbers. They're closed under addition. Now let's look at the set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We say that set is closed. If I take any two elements, add them together, I get something that's again in the set. For example, 1 plus 3. 1 is an S, 3 is an S. I add them together, I get 4, and 4 is again an S. So we like that. Does that mean S is closed? No. We have to check all of them, and it's very complicated to check all of them. But if we just take a quick look at 4 and 5, 4 plus 5 gives me 9. 9 is not an S. So S is not closed under addition. Now, to show something is not closed under addition, if I've got the set S, I simply need one counterexample. To show that a set is closed under addition, I can't use one example. So we're going to look at a technique on how to show that a set is either closed or not closed. But to show that a set is closed takes a little bit more work. So let's take a look. I've got a set S here, ordered pairs X and Y, where Y is equal to 3 times X. We want to show it's closed under addition. At the top right, I just have a reminder of the definition of how we add ordered pairs. So let's just get a feel for the set S again. What do the elements look like? Well, y is 3 times x. So if x is 1, y is 3. If x is 0, y is 0. If x is 2, y is 6. If x is minus 2, y is minus 6. So that's sort of what it looks like. So now we're saying, if I take any two. So first, let's get a feel for it. Take any two of these, add them together. 1, 3. That still meets the rules. What if I add this first one and the third one together? 3 and 9. That still matches. Now, this is not a proof. This is just a little check to see what I'm aiming for. So it looks like if I look at these elements that I generated, if I add any two together, it seems like I end up in the set S again. So how are we going to prove this formula? formally well what we need is we need two elements of this set but we can't just pick, pick specific elements they need to be generic so let x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 be elements of s so these are any two elements of s all i know about them i don't know the exact values but i know that y1 is going to be three times x1 and y2 is going to be three times x2 so that is what I know because they are in S. So now let us see what happens if I add them together. X1, Y1 plus X2, Y2. Now, as we add ordered pairs, we know that we add the X and the X's, X1 and X2, and Y1 and Y2. Now, we haven't really done anything. What we need to now show is that this new set that we've got here is again in S. So it meets this requirement. So let us see. What is this second entry? Y1 plus Y2. I've got some information about that. That is 3X1 plus 3X2. I'm not done yet. I want to show that this one is three times this first one. Well, if I take out a three as a common factor, I've got X1 plus X2. Now I've shown. What have I shown? I've shown that X1, Y1 plus X2, Y2 is an element of S. Now I can conclude that S is closed under addition. So it's a bit more work and a bit more structured, but you can get used to it. Let's look at the next two sets, B and C. We're still on ordered pairs. We'll look at other types of sets shortly. So B is ordered pairs where the X portion is greater than the Y portion. Now, if I add two of them together, what do we think that's going to happen? Well, my gut tells me that if I 
add two numbers together, they'll still be bigger than the other ones. Let's see. Let's make this formula. Let x1, y1 and x2, y2 be an element of b. Then all I know is that x1 is greater than y1 and x2 is greater than y2. So my knowledge on numbers means I can conclude that x1 plus x2 must then be greater than y1 plus y2. All right, we're not going to formally prove this, but my knowledge on numbers and from that leads me to that. So I'm not done. I need to still show it. So x1, y1 plus x2, y2 gives me x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. So I know this is what I get when I add them together. And I've shown that x1 plus x2 is greater than y1 plus y2. So I can conclude that x1, sorry, I can conclude that x1, y1 plus x2, y2 is again in B. So B is closed under addition. All right, so far so good. But is it always going to be closed? Is every single set of ordered pairs going to be closed under addition? Not necessarily. Let's look at this set C we've got here. Ordered pairs where the x is equal to 2. So 2 naught, 2 1, 2 2, 2 minus 7. Those are all elements of C. So if I add any two of them together, will I again get an ordered pair where this first entry is 2? No, it's going to be 4 every time. So that one is not closed under addition. How am I going to show that? I'm going to say, so this was just my thinking, one side. Now I'm saying, well, 2 naught is an element of C, and 2, 2 is an element of C. If I add them together, 2 naught plus 2, 2 is equal to 4, 2. That's not in C. You could have chosen any two elements. I just chose two random ones, because as soon as I add them together, that first entry becomes 4, where I need it to be 2. So therefore, C is not closed under addition. All right, let's move on. Now we've got polynomials. And a reminder in the top how to add polynomials together. So let's look at our first set. We've seen these this R and S before, and when we looked at the section on set membership. Let's look at R. This first one is 4 every time. So 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. 4x squared plus 5. Those are all elements of R. What happens if I add them together? That coefficient of x squared is going to become 8. So if I've got those two and I add them together, 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 4x squared plus 5, add them together, I get 8x squared plus 2x plus 4. And that is not an element of R. So the set R is not closed under addition. The set S, however, is closed. And now I've gone over the process a couple of times, so we're going to go a bit faster. This is polynomials where not necessarily A and B has no restriction, but C is definitely zero. So if I say, and I'm going to name them because I don't want to write them out all the time. Let P of X be equal to A1X squared plus B1X plus zero because C is zero. So that's an element of S. And Q of X, A2X squared plus B2X, that's also an element of S. If I add them together... I get a1 plus a2x squared plus b1 plus b2x plus 0. So again, that sum is in S. So S is closed under addition. So lastly, let's just look at some matrices. Here's two sets of matrices, A and B. A, I've got the case where those two entries are equal to 1. 
So for example, 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 3, minus 1, 1. Those are both in A. Now, when I add them together, and yet again, if you're not comfortable with matrices, you haven't had experience with matrices, first look at them before you look at this section. But when we add matrices together, we just add the corresponding entries. So 1 plus 1, if I add those two together, I can see it's not going to work. 1, 4, naught 1, plus 1, 3, minus 1, 1, sorry, minus 1, 1. If I add those together, I get 2, 7, minus 1, 2. And that's not in A. So A is not closed under addition. And our last example, B, if I've got a matrix where the bottom row, the second row is filled with zeros, that one is going to be closed under addition. So if I say let A1, B1, 0, 0, and A2, B2, 0, 0. Let both of them be elements of B. And I add them together. A1, B1, 0, 0. Plus A2, B2, 0, 0. I get A1 plus A2. B1 plus B2, 0, 0. So that again is an element of B. I don't even have to prove it. So we can see that B is closed under addition. And that is how we test for sets being closed under addition.